Simple sayings, it's very true, and it describes an attitude we often start to get as we grow older. We become so concerned about the way our bodies start to change that we also start to change our minds. And it's that change that I'd like to speak to you about for just a minute here, right now. Late great baseball player Satchel Paige once said, how old do you think you'd be if you didn't know how old you was? Mm -hmm. Therein lies the wisdom in growing old. Do you ever wonder how some people seem to age gracefully while others fade away to nothing at all? Do you ever wonder how some people seem to hold their youth until they're almost senior citizens while others are crying the blues about their declining health before they've even reached the age of 30? Well, I certainly have. And I've come to the conclusion that certain old people have got commonalities which are worth observing observing because maybe they'll help the rest of us age better as we ourselves grow older. So here with are a few observations that I've developed over low these past few years <laughs> about advancing age that I'd like to share with you. First of all, most sensible seniors have long ago developed a sense of humor about their advancing age. I've got one old friend who says the first thing he does every morning when he gets out of bed is find his morning newspaper and read the obituaries. And if his name isn't in there, he shaves. Mm -hmm. He's the same fellow who noticed after a while that everybody these days seems to be dying in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> if you're too busy laughing and enjoying a good joke, you're probably not going to feel that old. It's not an accident that many people in the entertainment industry like Irving Berlin, Fred Astaire, and other people lived to ripe old ages. The very fact that they were keeping other people laughing and amused all of the time probably kept them alive a lot longer. Yes, a great part of it was probably the fact that they were in the center of things, keeping everybody amused, but laughter in itself is often the best medicine. In his book, Anatomy of an Illness, Norman Cousins described how he once laughed himself well from what was known to be a debilitating disease. Now, if fun is important to living a long life, so too is staying active. I was reminded of this just a few years ago by a man named Ed Bennett. Now, you don't know Ed, but he's a retired jockey from Ocean City, Maryland. And he ran in a race that I participated in, the Twin Cities Marathon in Minneapolis, Minnesota. At age 80, Ed, that October morning, finished a 26 mile, 385 yard distance at a time of three hours, 43 minutes and 27 seconds. And in so doing, beat to the finish line, many other competitors, including, including 261 able-bodied men more than 50 years younger than me. Now there's a man who believes in staying active. Shocking. But staying active doesn't mean exercise alone. There are many other things. Active older citizens love to volunteer and are members of all kinds of clubs and organizations. The wise way to live life long and hardy is to stay busy. So busy you don't have time to grow old and die. Mm. And that leads me to my perhaps most important point about successful aging, and that is attitude. Mm. Now, it's not easy to find good examples for successfully growing old out there, but if you look around, they're there. Recently, a doctor on a radio talk show in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was promoting a book on healthy pastimes that he'd written when he asked for phone calls from listeners. The second or third caller was a 92-year-old woman. She told the doctor she loved the ideas in his book and said they sounded a lot like the way she lived. She went on to talk about knitting, music, and other hobbies, her good friends, and her membership in a group called The Swingers. No. She said they went to, 
convalescent homes and retirement centers and put on dances and theatrical performances for the people there. Totally enamored by this, the doctor asked for details. Did she act and dance? Sure, she replied, but I do have some difficulty getting there because I've got arthritis in my hip and I'm blind. Mm -hmm. She focused, the doctor recalled, on her ability, not her disability. In other words, she hadn't let her lack of health completely control her life. Now, any talk of aging is irrevocably linked to physical appearance. We're always looking for people who show us how to age well, but get distracted by people who show us how to preserve well. We admire people who look terrific at age 60 without realizing what we're really praising is not so much, so much their ability to accept the aging process, but their ability to stop the clock. But it shouldn't be like that. As Gertrude Stein said, we're always the same age inside. It's not how old your body is, but how young your mind is that's important. In fact, people who age successfully have old bodies, but young minds. In the youth-oriented society that is the United States today, one of the greatest concerns most modern Americans have after injury and disease is that of growing old. But it doesn't have to be that way. As you've seen here in the past few minutes, a good sense of humor, the ability to stay active, and the right attitude makes one's golden years a time to look forward to. And that's all I've got to say about Moroccan. <laughs> Yay! Very good. Very good. Well done. Well done. Now, that you have crafted carefully. Yeah. It took you a while to do it. Uh, it's been over a few years. I, I can imagine.